Cristo Electric. Hey there, this is DJ Cristo Electric. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is going to be a really short tutorial, hopefully. Uh, I just want to go over some really basic things. I had a suggestion made actually today um, by a friend, uh, Joe, who's also known as J Shades. And uh, my recent track, you can check out with him. Um, it's called Dance All Night. But anyway, let's get underway. I, I want to uh, do this for Joe and for a lot of other people I know might have the same question. So this is a really popular technique. Uh, most notably known as the reverse reverb technique. Um, so anyway, let's go over this. This is the actual sound. This is what we're going to be working with um, right now. Christo Electric. And I just made this really quick, uh, use my own name, whatever. So, uh, and, and here's another uh, little thing you can do to it. So listen to this. Christo electric and all i did was control control that with a gate um so yeah let's go ahead and get on with this um with this tutorial and we're going to start from scratch so uh, you can record in your own um quick vocal like i did here um take some vocals if you're doing a remix or anything you want i mean take a snare or you hear that all the time with snares and you can do it with really any sample you possibly have, um, but you're gonna want to work with an audio sample. So um, here's an audio file right here, um, and it's just me doing the- Cristo Electric. So what a lot of people do, and I know this is a mistake people make, is they just copy out this track and they copy and paste. So now you have- Cristo. Two of the same file. Well, the problem with this is, we are going to need to reverse this file and watch what happens right here. And you'll see this done with both tracks. If I reverse this, it reverses both tracks. In the end product, you don't want the, uh, the Crystal Electric, in this case, to be reversed. So all three of these are affected right now. So um, I'm going to reverse them back to the way it was. It's 7 o'clock. And let me uh, delete that guy out of here. Now, what you want to do is bounce another version of this. So the best way to do this is bring your volume up to Unity, and you can do that uh, in Logic at least with um, option click, um, and that's pretty uniform across uh, in most DAWs. But, um, and so this technique is exactly the same, just integrate it into your own DAW. Um, so we're gonna right click in here, and we're gonna bounce this in place. And I don't really care for the name right now. And now let's unmute that guy. And let's solo this. Chris. Ooh. Christo. Be nice if I only grab this one file. Christo Electric. Now what I'm going to do here is reverse this new file. So I just open it down here in my file editor. I'm going to go to reverse. And now you see, because we bounced the version first, it's not reversing the original track. It's only doing this one. That's very important. So I'm going to zoom in here. Just so you know, I had this question before, how do you zoom in? Uh, hold down in, in Logic, you're gonna hold the control or command button, excuse me, and uh, press right on your directional pad is zoom in, left is zoom out. Um, that's horizontally. If you push up, it'll shrink vertically. And if you push command down, it's gonna grow vertically. So anyway, so I'm pushing down and right, right there, just so I get a better look at the uh, track. So what you want to do, you only want to grab the very first bit of the the vocal or the audio track. Trick. And I'm just going to like cr, C-H-R is all I really want. So I'm going to kind of blow this up and I can see that the audio actually comes in right here. This was recorded with a gate. So this is really actually dead silence. So I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to snap that off. And so now uh, we should have a really clean Oof. Oof. track right there. Um, something I like to do, uh, and it depends on the sample you're using or how long it is. This isn't really uh, prevalent with um, a snare track, but I actually um, like making a fade Oof. like that. Um, and now what you're going to do 
is take this guy and you're going to make a reverb for it. Um, and I, I've said this in previous videos, but you don't want a lot of low end. Well, I mean, you could. I personally don't like low end um, in my reverbs. It kind of muddies up the mix um, unless it's a specific effect you're looking for. But if you would take out a lot of the low end before you create a reverb on this track, um, then it's not going to really muddy up the mix, assuming that reverse reverb is going to be happening on top of, you know, bass and drums and stuff. But if it's the only low end uh, material or one of the only low end material um, during a buildup or something, perhaps, then there's no reason to do this step. But I prefer it uh, myself. So I'm going to do that. And then you go down here and you're going to grab a reverb. Uh, I'll just use a space designer here. And the trick to this is grabbing a really long reverb, a reverb with lots of tail. So what I'm going to do here is go to large. Uh, plate reverbs sound really good on voices. And just from experience, I know that midnight plate uh, is a really long and uh, actually a little darker and warmer uh, reverb. So I'm going to use that. And this is what it sounds like currently. Oof. I'm going to get rid of this and make it just wet. I'm going to totally take out the dry signal. What this is doing um, by dragging it out here is I will not hear any of this original signal. I'm only hearing the reverb happening. So I take that out and I'm boosting up the reverb. This is the wet and dry for the actual uh, reverb. It's just uh, REV. And a lot of times, depending on the reverb, you can bump up the de decay time just a little bit and uh, that can help with this effect as well. Um, just play with it. Um, so now this is what it sounds like. And I feel like I get about dead silence somewhere in here. So what I'm going to do is just drag this a little bit longer than needed and click on this track. And now I need to bounce this guy out. So I'm going to do the same thing. I need to right click on here and I'm going to bounce in place again. This time, you need to include the audio tail in the file and in the region. If you don't click this, it's only going to bounce out this reverse by itself again. There's not going to be any reverb tail on there. You see that there's no file physically here. It's just the, uh, the effect of the reverb that's tailing off in here, creating audio signal. So if you have to make sure to click this. And so it's going to bounce out that file. And now, this is what you're left with. So <clears throat> I'm going to solo just the bounced file. And that's exactly what we were hearing before. So there's no reason to keep this track anymore uh, unless you want it, but I'm going to get rid of it. At this point, what you're going to do is highlight uh, the reverse reverb, and you're going to reverse it again. What this is doing now is creating that reverb tail, but in reverse, so it's actually gonna suck in. So listen to this. Pretty cool, right? So I'm gonna drag this right to the uh, start of, well, I got lots of background tasks going on on my computer is feeling it, I guess. Um, I'm gonna just grab it and drag it. Wow, it's a little bit too much. And you don't want them, I, I like having them overlap just a hair, um, the, the start and the transient of the original audio and the tail of the reverse reverse reverb. So this is what it's going to sound like now, assuming my damn cycle will turn off. There it goes. Christo Electric. And this is where it like takes some finessing, getting this just in the right spot. Um, and a lot of times, as you see in the example I had here, I'll actually fade out just the last little bit of this file. Um, and sometimes, and maybe even the beginning of this one, depending on how uh, strong of a transient I want to keep here. And it just helps them blend a little bit better. So now that you see uh, the basic technique, I'm going to go ahead and delete these, and then we're, we're going to refer back to these other tracks that I was working with originally. Um, so this is what it sounds like with the uh, rest of the track in the session. Christo Electric. So I hope that helps. Um, I'm going to take this just one step further 
there's lots of things you can do to this to add some originality um, and really make it your own. Uh, one of the things I would suggest is uh, key gating, or, or, or I'll gate and, uh, and do a sidechain. So how exactly you do that is create a brand new track, um, an instrument track, or you can even take, you know, maybe the drum groove you have going on earlier in the song, and you're going to use it as a gate. Um, for this instance, I opened up uh, Ultra Beat, which is um, just the drum machine here in Logic, and I punched out a few notes, and uh, they're quite boring. Um, but if you, here, let me send out an output. This is what they sound like. And now uh, what I end up doing is I bust it out and um, I'll just turn it back off the output. I don't actually want to hear this track. So I send it to a bus and this bus I just happen to call trigger bus. And you'll see as this plays, you don't hear any volume, but you can see the uh, volume meters or the levels um, saying that it's being triggered. So I go back to the reverse reverb that I just created. and. I'm going to, for this specific instance, I'll use a noise gate, but you can sidechain with anything. And um, and I'm just sidechaining this um, along to bus one, which was that trigger track I just made. And just play with your threshold and reduction and everything uh, to get the sound that you desire. And this is what it sounds like with that noise gate on. So you see, you still get that, that sucking in movement, but there's um, some groove there in the background as well. So um, we'll just start this back at the beginning. I'm sorry, I keep losing my train of thought because I'm really frustrated with the uh, computer going so slow. I don't know what's going on. I have a monster machine here and it's really lacking. Christo Electric. So anyway, I hope that helped you guys, and uh, this was just a really uh, basic tutorial. And if you guys have any other further questions, any further um, tutorials, or, or anything you guys want, just go ahead and shoot me a, a message on Facebook or Twitter, or even on SoundCloud. So uh, as for now, peace, farewell, thanks for tuning in, and make sure to go check out that uh, track that I just made with Joe, The Dance All Night. Uh, thanks so much for the support, and we'll see you soon.